The Islamic Creed According to Imam Tahawi's Book Commentary by Sheikh Muhammad Al Yaqubi Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We are in the beginning of uh, this text of uh, Al-Imam Al-Tahawi, the Islamic Creed. In the past lecture, we summarized the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are highlighted in the books of uh, Aqeedah, later texts, classify them into four different categories, making the necessary attributes uh, uh, 20. Al-Imam Al-Tahawi here does not uh, ponder on the first attribute, Al-Sifa al nafsiya the essential attributes, Al-Wujud, existence because it is assumed or pre-assumed and talking to Muslims there is no need to argue for it there is no need to explain it or present any proofs to it however the issue of uh, the existence of God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a subject of debate with atheists those who do not believe in God. And uh, amongst us Muslims, the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is self-evident. As uh, a poet put it, وَفِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ لَهُ آيَةٌ تَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّهُ وَاحِدٌ There is a sign in everything that tells us that He is there and He is the one. So we see it because we are believers and uh, our beliefs are strong and do not uh, shake. But when talking to those who do not care about religion or those who do not believe in a God or in God at all, then we need to start from scratch proving the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for that, there are several methods. And the best method is to start from observing the universe in front of us and then stepping up from the universe to build a, a, a proof how? We see in front of us things. Things in front of us are existent. And often we see things that were not existent and they were brought into existence in front of our eyes. And we see things changing in the world in front of us. These observations are obvious. And these observations build up an evidence to prove the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because everything that changes is made at a certain time and has a beginning and cannot be beginningless. And it cannot be everlasting. So it must have a beginning. Someone brought it into existence after it was not existent. This is the starting point. So we say everything made must have a maker. So the question is, is there a maker for this universe? Or did it just exist by itself? When you look at science, you will find enough proofs, absolute proofs that this existence could not 
this world could not have existed by itself. Not by random. And this is a proof called Dalil al-Sudfa, the proof of the impossibility of the existence of the world by random. Why? Because of the wisdom and the design that is in it. So there's no way that the human being, as is, could have been put randomly. The orbit with all of its planets, the worlds of animals. If you observe one example, take the spider, take the ant, take the bee, take uh, the ocean and the miracles that are in it, take uh, every aspect of this world bring miracles and proves that it's impossible that it existed by chance. So the example of, uh, of this would be if you bring a box, a big box, and put in it a million letters made of metal, and you shake it, what would come out of it? This is the example. This is the example of chance. What chance there is to get a full sentence, to get a book, to get a, a collection of poetry put there. It's impossible. It is impossible. So the everything, so everything made must have a maker. This is one of the most important and fundamental proofs to the existence of God. Also, there is another way of proving the existence of God by looking at, uh, at the world. And we know that it, ex it, is, it is in existence. And it could not have moved from pre-existence to existence, but by an outside power. This is called Dalil al-Rujhan bighayri murajjih. Because for everything in this world, it is possible it exists, it is possible it does not exist. So who gave it this favor or this quality of existence? Or who does give it the quality of non-existence when it ceases to exist? It must be an outside power. So this is why in order to succeed in the debate about the existence of God, we must start from what we observe and what we see. It is wrong to start with the question, does God exist? Several debates have taken place in the West between atheists and Christian theologians. And the debate started with the question, does God exist? It is wrong because the opponent would say, okay, define God for me. And you cannot define God. And then the theologian is lost because they started with the wrong start. You see what you observe because it is tangible. It is in front of your eyes. You see it existent. You see it's uh, a changing uh, situation or it is changing always. And these observations are facts upon which we build the proofs later on and start from. And this is common logic that should be accepted. And uh, there is no way to argue against it. And these proofs are absolute proofs to the existence of, of God. There are proofs which uh, sometimes uh, would help you uh, strengthen your iman. We call them persuasion or persuading proofs, hujaj uh, Sometimes you see miracles happening in front of you, uh, which uh, clearly tells you that there is God there. And of course, they are of great help for the believers and sometimes for people who do not believe and are led by emotion 
or led by their hearts. But by reason, of course, the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or a God is well established by reason. And this is uh, the beauty of the Islamic creed. The Islamic creed is as simple as it should be accepted by any mind that reflects on the basic elements of the truth. So this is how we start with the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is pre-assumed here. And the number of proofs is, is quite high. And there are scholars who excelled in studying and writing about the proofs to the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the greatest theologians, Al-Imam Fakhruddin al-Razi, one of the great uh, scholars from the Ash'ari school, author of the famous tafsir, Mafatih al-Ghayb, Keys to the Unseen. He was a master of theology. And once uh, he was walking in the streets, and uh, a lady, an elderly woman, asked, who is this man? Because he was walking with a huge entourage, students around him. It was a big convoy. So she was asked, uh, she asked, who is this man? One of his students answered, this is the man who knows 1,000 proofs to the existence of God. She said, had he not had a thousand doubts, he wouldn't have needed a thousand proofs. See, this elderly woman, in her simple belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, she didn't see the need for any proof because it's self-evident. She can see that no one could or should argue against the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what we call uh, shuhud, that you see it with your heart, with the inside, of course, not with your eye, because God cannot be seen by our eyes in, in, this, uh, in this world. So unless someone uh, dreams and cannot describe any uh, certain uh, figure, but with our eyes while awake, it is impossible to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we see him or we witness him in our hearts. This is why there are several ways of, uh, of believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How is your iman established? The purpose of the study of aqidah is not just to memorize texts and excel in knowing a discipline or go and teach it later on or the the first purpose as we say the fruit of it is to correct our iman to strengthen our iman now strengthening our iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be done through several methods and one of the let's say uh, levels of believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are several levels one level is you are a believer because your father is a believer your parents are believers. You're Muslim because they were Muslims. Now this is called taqlid, following. We, we can't call it blind following unless, unless if they change, you change. This is blind following. This is why Imam Ahmad Zarruq put this subtle difference between a taqlid and an ittiba'ah. Following and blind following. Al ittiba' is following. You're Shafi'i because your parents were Shafi'is. So you were exposed to the Shafi'i fiqh, so you studied it and you're Shafi'i. Now, this is ittiba' called. In Iman, there is quite danger here. If you're a blind follower, then that's not accepted. If your parents are Muslims and you're Muslim because your parents are so, and if they change, you change, that's quite dangerous or very dangerous, and it's not accepted. 
but your parents are Muslims and you are Muslim because they were Muslims, but you developed a simple proof, but you developed a simple proof and you will never change. Even if they change, you're not going to change. That's good. That's accepted. Now, what are the uh, basic or most basic proofs uh, required from Muslims? As a young boy, young girl, what do you need to know that God exists? It's enough to read in the Quran al-Kareem. قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم It's enough You don't need to delve into logic and uh, start uh, uh, arranging uh, prepositions and getting uh, conclusions out of them uh, in, in, uh, as it is uh, presented in logic You don't need any of that As simple as a textual a textual proof is enough for you. Or, as many say, someone asks you, is there God? Of course, can't you see the world? That's enough. When you say this sentence, this sentence is a summing up of a, a, a whole uh, proof, evidence, that has its own prepositions, and you just put the conclusion in it. Well, uh, one proposition, that is, the universe is in front of you, so it must have a maker. So, uh, as simple as this way, you don't need to get uh, sophisticated uh, proofs. So, your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that level becomes based on evidence. Based on evidence. Now, later on, you can strengthen your belief through recitation of the Quran, through dhikr and develop it so that the truth is strong in your heart and you witness the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart so it does never shake. It's like if you are in a dark room and people tell you the sun is rising outside is based on their news. No, we want you to open the door and see the sun with your own eyes. Although the knowledge you've got from them is, is absolute. A group of people tells you that the sun is shining outside. You can't deny it. You have to believe in a group of people who everyone tells you that they saw. As a poet put it, وَإِذَا لَمْ تَرَ الْهِلَالَ فَسَلِّمْ لِأُنَاسٍ رَأَوْهُ بِالْأَبْصَارِ if you haven't seen the crescent, then believe in the people who already uh, saw it with their own eyes and gave testimony. So this is the mutawatir uh, knowledge or the knowledge that is proven through a huge number of, of people. Denying it is insanity. So, but we still want you to see the sun with your own eyes, open the door and get outside. In the case of belief, we want you to witness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your heart through dhikr, through ibadah, through recitation of Al-Quran al-Kareem, and through uh, contemplation. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Al-Quran al-Kareem in many verses, سنريهم آياتنا في الآفاق وفي أنفسهم حتى يتبين لهم أنه الحق We will show them our signs in the horizons and within themselves until it is self-evident to them that he is the truth, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's how we base our level. Now this elderly lady, her iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was in no way to be shaken. This is why she, she found it strange that people need proofs. Of course, the more uh, challenges there are, the more scholars, theologians develop uh, proofs. Uh, Imam al-Razi did not develop these proofs because he needed them, but there are people outside who need these proofs, who do not believe in the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and argue, and we have to bring counter arguments against them. This is, in a nutshell, how 
we describe the attribute of al-wujud, the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is described as a sifa nafsiya in uh, the books of uh, Tawheed, that is to say essential, essential. It is, uh, it is not uh, uh, something extra, it is his being subhanahu wa ta'ala that is his existence, al-wujud. So brothers and sisters, our lesson that we should learn from the study of the proofs of the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he is self-evident. And the signs around us and within us speak of his existence. And we should witness him subhanahu wa ta'ala so that there is no doubt at all. A lot of people, when they see you, talking here about the West, when you meet non-Muslims, they, they, they would embrace the truth and become Muslims if they see your, your uh, strong belief, that is to say, your assertion. You're not shaking, you're not doubting, there is no hesitation, you're not wavering. When they see that level that level of how sure you are, then it helps them a lot to embrace the truth. And uh, uh, if we get out of this lesson with an increase iman, an increase uh, yaqeen, this level of yaqeen in certainty in the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we would see the fruit of it, uh, pleasure, in our ibadah, this is halawatul iman, the sweetness of iman, which we would see in our prayer, and it will help us in every act of worship, starting from prayer, to have this khushu' and observation, muraqaba of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless you and reward you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.